you use input scopes to give the software keyboard a hint. So if you're familiar with the WPF input scope, it's basically the same API there. Um, so we will start off by adding text blocks here that we're going to use as our input scope sample. And we're going to add a list box to show all the available input scopes. Come on, you can do it. All right. So basically, so now we'll double click to do the selection change event. So first thing we're going to do is to basically add a little sample code to help us work with the input scope enums. So this is a really simple helper class that lets you get um, basically a list of, a data bindable list of, of strings from any given enum, and then to basically convert enum values to and from a string. So we're going to basically data bind this to the list. So So then we need to populate the list box. So we'll just say list box one, item source. We'll use our magic enum helpers class. Get values. So the input scope enum we use this, is input scope name value. So we'll get these guys. And that'll basically fill the list with all the enums. And then when you select one and you bring up the text box, you want to you apply that. So um, so we have a little code here that sets this. So um, it's actually much easier to set an input scope in XAML. Um, we've got a nice type converter for it. So you say input scope equals like telephone number. It's really simple. Um, in code, it's a little more complicated because it's, it's a complex property. And the, you know, the type converter is taking care of this for you. But basically, we're just. Um, using this enum helpers to take the string that we got from the, from the list box and turn that back into an input scope and set it to the, uh, the input scope property on the text box here. So to deploy this out to the emulator. So here's our list of all the input scopes available. So the first thing I want to show is, and Scott showed this yesterday too, is we've basically taken scroll viewer and implemented pan and flick on that so you don't have to write any code. So if anything uses a scroll viewer, including a list box, just automatically gets panning and, and flicking automatically. So you don't really have to think about that much. It just kind of works. And you know, we've done a lot of work to make that work super smooth and very quickly. So, so first we'll show the, uh, um, let's pick an interesting input scope here. How about telephone number? So you guys all saw the, the standard software um, keyboard yesterday. And when you set the telephone number input scope, it looks a lot different. It looks like a telephone number. So it's kind of neat. Um, if we go back, you can do uh, just a straight up number. So instead of showing characters, you get the things you might want for a number. My favorite one, though, is, is text. This one's kind of cool. So the, built into the phone, they have this, uh, this view where you can get all the emoticons. So you can kind of go party away on this stuff. Um, it's kind of neat. And there's one more here that's chat, which is actually a visual version of that. Um, but it's, there's a bug right now in the emulator. So if you, if you click this, you, you see a bunch of the, the pictures of the smileys. But the, in the emulator right now, they're all the same except for one. So there's a little, some resource mapping issues there. Um, I shouldn't start out showing you a bug in the platform right away. But it's, uh, it's, that, that'll actually be really fun once, it, once it's fully working. So we'll go there. Um, so jump back to the slides here. So, so what I just showed you is that you know, the text box really integrates with the, the OS keyboard that's, that's kind of built in. So you know, the, as they make changes to the operating system, that just kind of picks, is picked up in your application. Um, another thing that I didn't show, but we've, we've done the standard kind of password obfuscation delay. So if you're inputting um, a password on a, on a password text box, it's, you see the, the character for a second before it turns into a dot. So just kind of what you'd expect on a phone, because the software keyboard is kind of tricky with passwords. Um, we talked about input scopes. So you know, again, there's a big list of them. Um, the kind of key ones that are really interesting, you've got text, URL, number, time, telephone number, and email address. 
Um, and then we, we, sh we showed how Scroll Viewer has built-in support for panning and flicking, so um, you shouldn't have to think much about that from a, uh, from a gesture integration support. But if you do want to, um, we've got this, these new um, events um, on controls called manipulation events, and those, those give you um, pinch and zoom, uh, pinch and stretch and, and zoom um, data, and it basically just comes with a, it, it, you subscribe to this and you basically just get a transform out for what, what the result of that is. So it's, it's really easy to use. Uh, you can use this to hook, hook pinch and stretch up to a deep zoom control in, in a couple minutes. So now we're going to talk about the accelerometer. This one, um, it's pretty straightforward once you understand it, but it, until I, I found a picture similar to this, I really struggled to, to find out what was going on. But basically the idea is that you get, you get force it's effectively in units of gravity applied in every dimension over time. So every, every sample comes with an X, Y, and Z force as well as um, a timestamp. And so if you, if you think about your device, like we've got one here, um, if it's sitting on the ground, Z is in, and X is this way, and Y is this way. So X and Y make sense, they're the same as screen coordinates, and Z is into the device. So if it's sitting here like this, you have one gravity force down, right? So that's negative, the, the Z axis is down that way, so you have minus one G. Um, if, you, if you put it this way, you have minus one X. And so it's, as soon as you understand that, it, it kind of makes sense, and you can basically use that to orient the device in space. Um, so it's kind of nice. And you also can get greater than one gravity, so if you shake it or do something crazy with it, you can get you know, units of gravity greater than one, and that's how you can you know, figure out if you're doing something, your urban spoon type app, where you're shaking the heck out of it. Um, so let's go, let's go dive in and, and write an accelerometer app. So switch back to the demo laptop here. So we'll create a new project. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically just add a button, and we're going to have the button move as you tip the device. It's not, not super advanced, but I'll show you another demo afterwards. It's a little more fun. So we're going to change this to be a canvas. It's easier to set the X and Y position on that. Um, drag a button out. OK, so our button's kind of roughly centered. See that here. So what we'll do is we um, will add a reference to the devices. So this is, this is the first time we've looked at the references. So you'll notice that your standard Silverlight surface area is like you'd expect it all in the system namespace. All of the, the extra stuff that's not part of the standard Silverlight surface is in Microsoft.star assemblies. So this is, this is where you'll find some, all the extra goodness. Um, so the accelerometer is in sensors, so we'll add a reference to that. The next thing we're going to do is we want to turn off the auto, uh, auto orientation support. Peter's going to talk more about that next hour. But for now, we just want to keep it in portrait. So we don't want it to flip automatically, so we'll just set it to portrait. Um, and then we're gonna, what we're going to do is create uh, an accelerometer sensor. Type that. We'll use. And we'll just create a global variable, because we're going to want that here. And what we'll say is accelerometer equals uh, Accelerometer sensor dot default. So most of the most of the sensors there's only one of, so they kind of have a static pattern where you just grab the default. You get the reading change event. Oops. And then we'll we'll start it. All right. So. There's two bugs right now with, with the accelerometer. Um, not bugs, kind of design, API design pattern no-nos. The first one, which is kind of a pain, um, is that it, this event right now fires on the background thread, so it doesn't fire on the UI thread. Um, so to get around that, we'll just do a little uh, dispatcher begin invoke love. So we'll just basically marshal back the UI thread. Um, that's something we definitely want to address before, before this ships, um, ships properly. Um, the next one is more of a, just kind of an anecdote, but so what we're going to do is basically set the left and top um, property on the button based on how much is being tipped. So we'll set left here. So this is just uh, a little shortcut to, to type all the, you know, the attached property code that you guys are probably all know and don't love. But to get, so to get data from the accelerometer, um, I have to tell you a little story first. So a lot of the devs on our team, they kind of, they're a little snarky and they'll make fun of uh, a lot of times people who put it process in the way they kind of, you know, they, they, de 